For the last couple of decades, Greece and Denmark have been at loggerheads over cheese. But not just any cheese, over feta. A cheese which Greece claims they have the exclusive right to create. But how do the two compare? Is Greek feta actually any better than Danish feta? Well, today we're going to find out by having a cheese off between Greek feta and Danish feta. Hey there, cheese historians. I'm Julia, and welcome to Cheese History, a channel where we talk about the history of cheese and compare protected cheeses to their more generic counterparts. In this cheese off, we're going to compare protected Greek feta with Danish feta to see which one is actually best. Basically how this works is we're going to open up both of these cheeses, we're going to cut off a chunk, see what they're like, see how they taste, and then we're going to grill some on some toast just to see if they melt at all. And once I've done all that, I'm going to rank them on this tier list. Now there are five categories that these cheeses could fall into. The top category is called more cheese please, which is where the best of the best cheese goes. The cheese where I could pr pretty much eat the entirety of the rest of the block. The second tier is called Great Cheese, and this is where the next level down cheese goes. This is excellent cheese, but it's just not quite as good as the more cheese, please. The mid tier is called Cheesy, which is where all the cheesy cheese goes. This is basically the average cheese. You know, it's, it's good cheese, but it's not, it's not great cheese. Uh, the next tier down is, is good enough. This is cheese that is, it is good enough to be called cheese but it's nothing special in any way, but it's cheese. And the final category, the bottom tier, is you call that cheese? And that's where we put all the cheese that really has no rights to be called cheese. So those are our five tiers. So let's look at our two cheeses. The, this one here is our Greek feta, which you might have been able to tell by the fact that it has Greek feta written in big blue letters on the front. And it's imported by Food Snob. It claims to be made in Greece. And interestingly enough, if I turn it over, on the back it actually says it's PDO cheese. So this is a genuine protected designation of origin cheese made according to the PDO standards in Greece. So this is pretty much the genuine article. You can't get any more Greek feta than this Greek feta. Uh, it's made with a mix of sheep and goat's milk, which is how traditional Greek feta is supposed to be made. So that's excellent. Now uh, the other cheese, this one here, is Galaxy uh, Creamy Feta. This is one of several Danish fetas that you can get in New Zealand supermarkets. And it says product of Denmark. So we know we have Danish feta here. Unlike the Greek feta, which is sheep and goat's milk, this is a cow's milk feta. So these two cheeses are not exactly equal in terms of being made from the same milk, but they are both claiming to be feta. So it will be an interesting comparison, even though they're gonna end up being quite different. But why compare Greek and Danish feta in the first place? Why not compare Greek feta to a New Zealand feta? Well, the reason I thought I would compare Greek with Danish is because there's been this long-standing sort of uh, back and forth between Greece and Denmark over feta. Basically, in the 90s, Greece got a protected designation of origin for feta, which basically means that cheese in the EU can only be called feta if it's made in Greece in certain ways. So it has to be Greek feta in order to be called feta. Now Denmark at the time made a lot of feta and they were kind of a bit miffed by the fact that Greece now had the exclusive right to call their cheese feta and Denmark had to call their cheese something else. But one of the things that Denmark also does is they try and get around the rules as much as possible. So if they export feta outside of the EU to a country like, like New Zealand, then they still call it feta. And Greece has a problem with this. So Greece is currently, I believe, in a uh, court battle in the EU with Denmark over the fact that they export cheese called feta. So these two cheeses are in some way a representation of that conflict between Greece and Denmark over calling their cheese feta outside of the EU, not just inside of the EU. So let's start with the Greek feta. In theory, this should just be a peel, a peel packet. Now, understandably, it is damp because it's feta and it's always stored in a little bit of brine in the packets. And it's, ooh, it's cracking. <laughs> it's held together barely, so there's cracks appearing in it. There's quite a few holes where, where the curds have not quite stuck together all that well. It smells like like cheese, not impressively strongly or anything. It just has a sort of like a very faint sort of cheesy smell to it. Let's cut off a chunk and see what our 
Oh wow, that is crumbly. So we have a very, very not, not too breakable, but but very kind of crumbly. If yes, you could yep, you can smush this to pieces. Before I make more of a mess with this, let's see what it tastes like. It's salty because it's better, and um, mmm. It has a little bit of that flavor of goat's cheese because there's obviously goat's milk in here, but it's not overpoweringly goat's cheese like, which is kind of nice because I'm not the greatest fan of goat's cheese. Uh, so it actually is, um, it's kind of a very nice sort of mild, salty feta flavor. It's, it's really nice. So let's see how it compares to the Danish feta, which is a cow's milk cheese. It should also have a tear off thing. There we go. So once again, it's damp because there's a little bit of brine in the packaging. It's interesting to compare the look of these two cheeses. So the Danish feta is very dense, very compact. There are no mechanical holes in it anywhere. It's just a solid block of feta. Whereas the, the Greek one here, there's way more complexity in there. As in like there's holes, there's texture. Whereas this one, no danger of that. It is a solid, solid dense block of cheese. It has almost no smell to it as well. I mean, maybe like a faint salty smell, but but almost, almost no smell at all there. So let's cut off a chunk of this one as well. Oof. Cut very smoothly. Similar sort of texture on the inside if you compare the two. This one is still way more dense than the Greek one, but but still very, very crumbly. Let's uh, see if we can a lot more effort to, to, to break there. I think it'll take a lot more effort to... Ah, nah. It smushes pretty well. Let's see what this one tastes like. Wow, that is very salty. Much saltier than that one. And to be honest, that is kind of the dominating flavor. Whereas the Greek feta did have the notes of the goats and sheep's milk. This one, it is very, very salty. There's not much to it other than the salty flavor of the brine. So there's not the same level of complexity. It's it's good if you like really salty feta or really salty cheese or really salty anything because it is very salty. So on the salt quantity, actually, if we compare the information on the back of the packet, the Greek feta has 800 milligrams of salt per 100 gram, whereas the Danish feta has 1400 milligrams per 100 gram, which is actually quite a big difference, which would explain the difference in saltiness between the two cheeses. So, so that's kind of interesting. It's, it's not just that they're both equally salty. The Danish feta is genuinely saltier than the Greek feta. So our next step is to take some of this cheese and put it on toast and see how it grills to see if either of them melt, see if their flavor changes or improves after being being grilled up, basically. So here are our pieces of toast and we're gonna put some feta on each of them and we're gonna see how well they grill. So this one is going to be the Danish feta and this one it's gonna be the Greek feta. And now we shall put them in the oven and grill them up. And here we have them. These are our two types of feta grilled in the oven for a couple of minutes. So this one is the Greek feta and this one is the Danish feta. Both of them have turned out pretty similar. There's a bit more crispiness on the Greek feta. So let's see if toasting them has made any difference to the flavor of the cheese. And we'll start with the Greek feta. If anything, toasting it has kind of made the goatiness of the cheese come out a little bit more. It's kind of um, still still mildly salty. It's still a really nice complex feta cheese with, with layers of flavor and not a great deal of saltiness. So let's try the Danish feta to see how it compares after being toasted. The overwhelming flavor there is still salt, so it is still a very salty, briny flavored cheese. Toasting it hasn't really brought out any complexity of flavor or anything. 
it's still just a very salty feta. So where would I rate these two cheeses on my cheese tier list? Let's start with the Greek feta. So this one, I think I'm gonna put in great cheese because I think it is a really nice cheese. It's got complexity, it's got flavor, it's not overly salty, but it's not really a cheese that I would eat the entire block of. It's not one that says, eat me. Uh, it's just a really, really nice feta. And as for the Danish feta, well, I'm gonna have to put that in, you call that cheese because honestly, it tastes like salt. It doesn't really taste like anything else. Almost nothing of the cow's milk that's made it comes through in the flavor. It basically just tastes like a salty brine. And that's not what I wanted a cheese. I want to be able to taste the cheese itself. So, I mean, come on, you call that cheese? Where's the cheese flavor? So have you ever tried Greek and Danish feta? And what did you think of them? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know if you disagree with where I've placed these two cheeses on the tier list. Because, after all, this is only my opinion, and you're allowed to disagree with me. That's all for this Cheese Off Cheese Historians, so I'll see you next time for more cheese history.